This is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. We have a rogue judge who rules that properties are worth a tiny fraction, one one hundred, a tiny fraction of what they actually are. Yeah, so now let's bring in Donald Trump Jr., executive vice president of the Trump Organization. You know, again, shocking to see your dad in court, but he chose to be there because he wanted to, to show the world what a witch hunt really looks like. About right, Don, let, let you weigh in. Yeah, no, I think 100 percent. You know, you see the look of the judge who disregarded his own appellate court, like the, you know, a higher court threw out, I think my father said, approximately 80 percent of the things in there. But he chose just to disregard that. He's getting his 15 minutes. In New York, you're a hero if you take on Trump. You could be wrong. You could be breaking all the institutions of government. You could be breaking the law or, or choosing not to follow it. But that doesn't matter. You'll be made a hero. Eric, we see this time and time again. You see it with Letitia James just staring at Trump like a lunatic uh, there. But, you know, that's what they come to expect. They've gotten those same results in Washington, D.C., with the January 6th defendants who can't possibly get a fair trial. In Fulton County in Georgia, where you can't get a possible fair trial. This is designed, well, and it's been weaponized. It's why it, they're it, choosing these state battles, even though stuff's been thrown out. They're just going to keep it in there because they like the narrative. Election, election interference, no doubt. Uh, but, but, uh, along those lines, Don, I, I found this fascinating. The camera was in the courtroom, Letitia James staring over at your dad at the defense table. But then the camera pans to the judge. Folks, look at this. You think you're going to get a fair trial when this judge, there's a judge realizing he's on camera. What is that? What is that? Is that a fair judge or is that someone who's just so happy he's got Donald Trump in his courtroom? Don. Yeah, no, it's someone who understands. It's like Fauci. You'll make him a hero. As long as you go against Trump, as long as you go against it, it doesn't matter. We'll be a hero in New York. And that's what they've tried to do. They've tried to weaponize our system in areas where they know that someone like Donald Trump, a conservative who's actually standing up to that machine, to that narrative, can't stand a chance. It's why they disregard eyewitness testimony. It's why they disregard sworn testimony from witnesses who are experts in that field. It's why that judge can disregard New York's own appellate court court, things that were thrown out, 80% of this case thrown out. No, no, no. We're going to hear it. We're not going to have a jury. I'm going to be the judge, jury, and executioner, and I'm going to smile for the cameras because in New York, that'll make you a hero, whether you're throwing out the, every norm in the U.S. Constitution or not. It doesn't mean anything anymore because we don't have equal justice under the law, Eric. That has been thrown out. That is now long gone. It's only now that the American public is finally starting to see it. And that's why my father wanted to be in a court. So people understand just what's at stake. So they understand it is not just just Trump. They will do it to them eventually. And that's their plan. And it's become more and more apparent with every passing day. It's amazing. You know, the, Letitia James literally ran for attorney general on the basis of I'm going to get Trump. That, that, she yeah. she boldface said it and they elected her. And now she's she's providing the people who elected her with what she promised. And that's why you can't go, oh, you didn't know what you're going to get. This is a surprise. No surprise. No surprise she, she announced it. Well, I have but you, she you said mentioned. he was guilty before she'd seen any evidence, Eric. I mean, she fundraises off of it. That's what they can try to destroy a great company that employs thousands of Americans and everything like that so that they have the material for another fundraising campaign. She tried doing it when her disastrous failed attempt at governor. Because, again, I think outside of New York City, people actually of the state of New York probably realize what's going on. But that doesn't matter. They're going to do whatever they can. And if they can get some extra notoriety and use that to catapult themselves into some sort of higher position later on or, you know, a lunatic cabinet position in the Biden administration, so be it. Rules of the Constitution, yeah. our legal system be damned. We're going to do that to get famous and raise money. You know, Don, you brought up January 6th. It, it, it strikes me as a very odd. This, this Jamal Bowman, who is a congressman, Democrat, socialist yeah. uh, congressman, who pulled a fire alarm to probably try and stop a continuing resolution vote to happen. And, uh, you know, it blows us away that on the left, they say, you know, if you obstructed congressional processes, you go to jail, sometimes five, sometimes 10 years for January 6th defendants. But this guy is now claiming, I didn't know the difference between the fire alarm. I think we have a picture of the actual fire alarm, what he pulled. And what he thought, he says he, he thought it was, he was pulling an exit sign, Don. Well, listen, I, it wouldn't surprise me that a Democrat in Congress doesn't know the difference these days. But I'm going to pretend that a, a congressman, 
uh, does know the difference. I'm going to pretend that someone who was a principal at a school in New York probably has run a couple of fire drills and knows exactly what's happening. And that's why what's happening right now is disgraceful. Absolutely, Eric, nothing will happen to this man. He obstructed proceedings. He endangered lives, possibly. You're not allowed to scream fire in a crowded theater. That's the rules. We know that. And yet hundreds of people, nonviolent protesters at January 6th, people who may have taken a selfie within the velvet ropes, had no idea that what was even going on at this point, are doing years. They were denied due process. Exculpatory evidence was hidden uh, from their lawyers by members of Congress for years. That's the two-tiered system of justice that we're talking about. This guy should be in jail, or each and every one of those nonviolent offenders should be released with an apology, with compensation for the years and attempted destruction the Democrat machine and, frankly, the weaklings on the Republican side caused them. That's the problem with what's going on. This man knew exactly what he was doing. He did it anyway. He knew exactly the consequences. But he also knew that because he's a Democrat, there would be no consequences. Because he's part of that protected cabal, nothing would happen to him. And that's the shame of what's going on in our country. It's an absolute disgrace. And as much as I complain about it, as much as your viewers complain about it, they'll be, they say that will change absolutely nothing. Nothing will happen to Jamal Bowman and he'll be made a hero just like Letitia James, just like this judge can disregard all of the rules, all of the norms, and they will be made into heroes and deities by the left because they're just fine with everything that's going on in this country. And it's a freaking disgrace. You know, Jamal Bowman says that he uses that, <laughs> that exit quite often. So for him to say, I didn't know, he's either lying or he's really really damn stupid. Let's put it that way. It's one or the other. I imagine it's both, Eric. Uh, but, uh, you know, th that's the problem. Again, it doesn't matter. You know, oh, yeah, his excuse. And it's changed about seven or eight times since he did it. Right. The original excuse was, I had no idea that the fire alarm would cause the things that pulling a fire alarm would cause. I mean, that's brilliant. Uh, you know, that that's like AOC. Uh, maybe uh, one of the other idiot members of Congress. I mean, that you may be expected from them, and I guess we should start expecting this from the Democrats, but even the dumbest of the dumb, and there's plenty of them in Congress, I imagine know the difference. And we all know that he does, but it didn't matter because he also knew that nothing would ever happen to him. He knew that he was immune from prosecution. And more importantly, he knew that the Republicans, even if they agree with me, would be too weak and feckless to do anything about it. Again, it's what we see going on all over the country, not just with Trump <laughs> Again. in New York. Not just in D.C., but in Georgia, with the J6ers, across the board. It's why concerned mothers going to PTA meetings are able to be labeled domestic terrorists by our own FBI and our own DOJ, because no one is standing up to them, and that's why they fear Trump. Yeah. Again, a school teacher, school principal for something like 10 years, the first thing you do, first day of school, the principal gets on the loudspeaker and says, by the way, all you who don't want to take a test, uh, don't pull a fire alarm, you get in trouble. The guy knows what a fire alarm looks like. I, it's 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 bet, you know what, crazy. So we're gonna leave it right there. Um, again, we're we're expecting to see your father in a lot of different courtrooms coming up with the next 12, 14 months or so. But uh, thank you for kind of clearing some of that up for you, Don Jr. Everyone, thank you. Thank you, Eric.